All right, welcome back to uh, the Curtis and Thomas podcast, touching on real estate in a few different areas. We've got a special guest on again this week, welcoming uh, Alex Siegmiller to the uh, show, who's going to talk a little bit about his business that he's uh, started up and a little bit about entrepreneurship for people uh, kind of in their, their 20s and figuring out what to do and in the new modern world of business. Welcome Siegs. Yeah, thanks for having me, Kurt. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Good, it's good to get you on. So I guess um, just to start, tell us a little bit about your business for those who don't know and a refresher for me. Sure, um, so we're a, we're a freight brokerage. Um, so the company started in February of 2019 um, so again, we're a freight brokerage. So what that means is we're a transportation company, but we don't actually own any trucks. Um, so we're facilitating the deals in between Canadian manufacturers and carriers. Um, a manufacturer would reach out to us, ask for a price on a shipment. So potentially Kitchener to uh, Vancouver. Um, we then would go to a few different carriers, try and get the best price possible on it. We throw a markup on that and then pitch it back to the manufacturer. So that markup between the carrier cost and the manufacturer uh, price that we've we've quoted them is how our company makes money. Um, And then we would ensure that everything goes smoothly from A to B uh, for these manufacturers. So you're kind of taking some of the work that, uh, you know, a transportation company would have to do as far as hiring sales and administrators and also shopping the best best prices for your your customers as well exactly yeah so selling point for us for a manufacturer to use us um, would be that we're supposed to be um, the experts for each specific lane um, and we would know which carriers um, are going to have the best prices so similar to um, if you were to shop um, insurance for your insurance, um, you can go to the underwriters directly for it, or you can go to an insurance broker and they'd be able to give you three or four different prices for it. Um, and in and, and freight, at least more times than not, people just want to get the best price possible. Um, so that's why they would come to us um, opposed to just going to carriers directly. Yes. Awesome. So for you, where's the draw between being, you know, maybe an employee of um, the brokerage itself and, you know, or not the brokerage itself, but rather the transportation company um, versus doing what you've done and becoming kind of an, an independent contractor and, and self-employed? Um, like why? Why? Have why I yeah. Why did you do right? it? What are the benefits to it? You know, are you happy with yeah. your choice? Um. Sure. So um, in school, in summer of fourth year, um, I worked at a at a brokerage in town called Rome Transportation um, and sort of sort of stumbled into the position that I didn't exactly know what the company did or what I was getting myself into. But I really enjoyed it um, when I when I was working there um, and then out of school, worked in in um, transportation as well. But on the other side of it, selling telematics to carriers. Um, reason why I've decided to go off on my own is just um, have always have always wanted to start my own business um, and and realize that this is something that I can do on my own. Um, so I, I may as well have be, be taking a larger piece of the pie opposed <laughs> to just a paycheck week, yeah. week over uh, week after week from an employer. For sure. Now I've known you for quite some time. I don't recall you uh, mentioning too much about transportation services when we were growing up. Um, And it's obviously not the flashiest of of businesses. Yeah. Um, So, you know, where do you kind of find passion in that? And is there kind of something that maybe an employee is overlooking about how brilliant an idea has to be to create a business? Yeah, um, good question. Uh, first part of that, um, yeah, definitely. I definitely uh, wasn't overly passionate about transportation growing up. Um, as mentioned earlier, it was just something that I s- sort of stumbled into um, and, and realized that I was having some success with it and it would be something that I'd be able to start um, on my own. Um, the, 
yeah. Sorry, can you give me the uh, yeah? What's the so second, what's the second so part of that? somebody sitting you know in a job right now could be like you know I need to invent the new Apple if I'm going to create a company. Um, yeah. But you've kind of focused on a, a small portion of a, a general industry's uh, functioning. Yeah. So, um, you know, to those people who are like, I really want to start a business, I have a very specific skill, you know, and they're not really sure if they can do it or not. What would you say to them? Yeah, um, I, I would say just to go ahead um, and actually do it. Um, I like I, you and I personally have bounced a few different business ideas off of each other. Um, and it would always seem like we'd start to do research for it. And then you'd always get to a stage where it's like, ah, well, shit, that might not work for it. Um, I don't know whether or not I want to proceed with it, but actually making that jump and doing this once you're actually in there, it's, it's really not as bad as you would think. Um, it's, it's definitely been a grind to get it up and going, but if you, if you have a passion for entrepreneurship and have an idea, um, that you think could have some success with it, I would say just to go ahead and do it because it, it seemed a lot scarier than it actually is once you've actually started it and are going. And, you know, like we've, we've definitely encountered issues along the way, but there's, there's typically a solution for that. Sure. Now with your transition at the beginning, uh, obviously it's a grind because you're probably not making as much money as you did full-time working. You got yeah. expenses that are probably the same, if not more. Um, you know, how did you personally kind of mitigate that kind of stress? Um, um, financing or <laughs> I, I don't I I don't know if I can give you too much advice on the uh, mitigating the stress side of it. Uh, so you see <laughs> in the bank account dwindle wasn't wasn't enjoyable um, at all. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I had some money saved up from the from the previous position, um, so I, I definitely recommend that. Have a have a little nest egg um, that that you're willing to. Um, I I try and make it for at least a year's worth, um, if if you can. Um, but year year one, I just took a because I wasn't paying myself a salary. I just took um, some equity out of the company. Um, at the end of the year, um, and then last year was able to pay myself the salary. It's it wasn't what I was making um, at my previous employer before I started Contender, um, and then this year I've increased that salary a bit more as well. Um, and then if the company's um, profitable at the end of this year, I plan on taking a small percentage of that. Um, but I don't I don't know I. I would, I would say I definitely have the mindset that this is a long-term thing for me and mm -hmm. I'm willing to take a, a hit in my pay cut for two to five years in order to build the company and then realize that I have equity within the company. And in 30 years, if I go to sell this thing, it's, it's going to be worth it. Right. So maybe talk a little bit about that too, because, you know, building a, a business is great, but if you can't transition that to somebody else um it's obviously yeah. difficult to sell and um you know exit strategy shouldn't be in the top kind of five priorities when you're first starting a business but yeah have you thought much about <laughs> it's, that it yeah i i have for i have for sure um i think that would ultimately be the goal here is to eventually sell it um and and as i mentioned earlier to you i'd, I'd say i'm more passionate about entrepreneurship and things that i could make money in than I am about transportation per se. So, uh, I mean, like if the right offer came along tomorrow, I'd, I'd honestly consider selling it. Um, I, I couldn't tell you too much about what I would, um, what I'd need to do in order to, um, in order to set myself up to sell it. Um, but just, just from talking with my dad um, a bit, the one thing that he's mentioned is make sure that I, um, that the company can still run without me. So if, if I was to sell the company um, and no longer be a part of it, no one's really going to pay much for it if it all revolves around me. Um, so I've tried to set it up um, in a way that the company's still going to function and still going to make money. So if somebody else was to buy it, I don't necessarily have to be there. Um, a different manager can come in or they can mold into uh, whatever company would buy us um, and the company would still be able to make money there. Sure. So, um, kind of speaking on that, when you were coming up with your idea, did you do that full, 
uh, dream board of, you know, this is what our marketing is going to look like. This is what our sales are going to look like, you know, kind of those standard yeah. business boards or was it kind of make it up as you go? Um, I, I had, I definitely had an idea for everything. I wouldn't say I did a formal business plan for it. Um, but I definitely knew where, how our sales were going to be generated, um, uh, and what we were going to use for different aspects, um, of the business. Um, there was a lot of, a lot of number crunching in Excel just to see if, so we have to make X amount of calls to generate X amount of clients, which is going to turn into X amount of revenue, which means X amount of bottom line. I, I never there knew you this good with variables, on. Seeks. <laughs> I, I can, uh, I can put up a front for a 20 minute <laughs> zoom call with you, but, uh, um, so there, there was a lot of that going on for sure. Um, just, yeah. And, and figuring out, um, what, what I should be paying employees and what, uh, commission percentage the sales guy should be taking. Um, there was a lot of that going on, but the rest of it, just from experience at Rome at the other brokerage, I, I had a good understanding and didn't necessarily put together a formal business plan. Mm -hmm. So you're in a business where uh, obviously you've been able to hire a few people and um, kind of expand the reach of the business. Um, how does that kind of feel being in charge of, you know, employees for the first probably time in your yep. life, I would imagine? It, it is. Um, it's, it's a change. It was a change for sure. I'd, I'd like to say I'm getting um, better at it as, as we continue to grow. Um, but definitely. So Scott was my, my first hire and Scott is um, essentially running our operations department now. And he's been an awesome hire um, for me. Um, but like the first like couple weeks of that, it's like, I'm, I'm debating in my mind, do I need to be more firm with him here? Or do I need to give him some space? So it's definitely a learning curve. Um, but it's, it's, it's been nice, um, for sure. Like I've been, I've been happy with, um, with all the hires that I've, I've made at this point, um, and, and try and again, I'm sort of learning as I go here too. Um, but try and typically give them some space and then it's like, uh, um, I'll, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt, um, and give them some space. And then if it, something doesn't pre doesn't seem to be working, um, I'll typically step in at that point, but, um, it's, yeah, it's, it's been enjoyable. I'm, I'm happy with our team. And I, I think they're, if they're a major part of our success. So maybe give us an example of one side of each, like where's something where your employees gone out and done something or created something for the company. And you're like, wow, I, I don't think I have the skill set to do that. And then maybe where's an area where you've had to, you know, correct course and, and step in and, yep. you know, crack um, the whip, well, they say. <laughs> um, to start, I'll go back to Scott. Um, so Scott, um, when he, when he started with me, he was originally a co-op student and I brought him in to sort of help with customer service and billing. Um, and in the brokerage industry, um, there, there's two ends of it. So we're dealing with the manufacturers and we're, and we're dealing with carriers. And I'd say they're both equally as important. Um, I enjoy dealing with the clients. I like the sales side of it. Um, Scott, I don't necessarily enjoy dealing with the carriers on the on the operation side of it. A lot of these guys are are full of shit, um, and it and it gets very frustrating. This will be after public, a while. by the way. That that's our that's our. Good. I like you're like don't, the New don't, York don't Rangers. <laughs> don't, public don't statements. With, yeah, don't share it with any of our uh, with any of the carriers we work with. Yeah. Um. So so anyways, I I don't. I don't typically enjoy that end of it. Um, Scott, very, the customer service side wasn't enough for him. So he was very pushy and like, uh, hey, like, can I try this? Can I try that? Um, so we eventually, I eventually had him start dealing with some of the carriers for it. Um, and it's, again, it's up to the point where he's now uh, are running our operations department. Um, so, so I would say some, that would be something that um, I, he's, he's more skilled at that than I am. 
at this point um, and he enjoys doing it. So that's definitely been, um, been beneficial. Awesome. I, I don't know if I want to, I don't know if I need to air any dirty laundry <laughs> of, uh, that's fine. I thought I'd, I'd try to catch okay. you on that. Um, no, that's excellent. Obviously um, you can't be everywhere in the business at all times. And um, yeah. it's, it's nice to hear that it's working out because you know, both of our parents are involved in entrepreneurship quite heavily. And I know for a fact, my dad's had positive and negative experiences with employees and, and stuff yeah. like that. Well, so go ahead. We all, we had uh, an employee quit um, a couple of weeks ago, like not like a big falling out or anything, but um, just like issues with uh, commitment. Like he was like consistently, uh, like last guy in first guy out so i don't know you you can use that as a as a as an issue nice with place. uh with employees yeah awesome i know we're getting a little bit older starting to see a little bit of the hair recede personally so this <laughs> isn't quite I think, yeah. I think my hairline's all right but anyways my point being is um you know we're fairly young guys um do you yeah. feel that you have an issue you know attracting employees who are maybe a bit older than you or you know people in the industry that aren't quite taking you as seriously or do you find that's kind of an advantage because you have more energy i i personally find it as an advantage um and i i try if i could get my dream hire each time it would be guys right out of school um and what i i'm talking more for sales um sales guys that i'm looking for here um, people guys what's that sales people Sale, yes. Oh, sorry, sales people. I know I got to be politically correct on Equal your, hiring on your practices. Or, yeah. Okay. Well, it's gonna be big uh, one day, so don't worry. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'd say I really look for people, sales people that are right out of school and super hungry. Yeah. Um, just because in our industry specifically for building your book of business, main way to generate clients is through cold calling. Um, so like I, I know myself from going through cold calling, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be making a hundred cold calls a day for months on end at this point. Yeah. Um, but when I was fresh out of school and hungry, I was willing to do that. So um, for sales, for sales people, I, I prefer to get them right out of school and hungry industry experience. I really could care less about. Um, we're actually looking to hire a part-time bookkeeper and like, the people um, on that side of things, I want pe people with experience. Um, and I, I wouldn't say necessarily that it's been difficult to um, hire people or interview people, at least with experience um, from that side of things. So no, um, yeah. but, but the more like the guy, the sales guys and the operations guys in the industries that have been around longer, um, I've had a couple conversations with them. And one thing I'm typically finding is they want a much higher base. Um, so I, I don't know. I was able to do it right out of school with not too much experience in the industry. I don't see why I can't find a sales guy at half the, half the salary cost right out of school that will be able to succeed as well. Right. So do you find that those guys asking for a higher base end up being worse salesmen anyways? Um, I haven't ended up going with any of them, but I would, I would, I mean, they're, they're probably more skilled if they have, if they've been in the industry doing sales for that much longer, but I don't know if the ROI would be that much better than hiring someone who's really hungry straight out of school. Awesome. So culture is pretty important for you. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've got a younger, a younger group for sure. Um, Natasha, Phil, and I. Natasha is a couple of years older. Phil and I are uh, ninety-three, and then Scott is ninety-five. James is ninety-eight, and then um, Abrar and Luke, who are um, like co-op students, are two thousand. So all like late, early to late twenties. Awesome. And if somebody like Robert De Niro and the intern showed up looking for a job, <laughs> would you give them a chance? <laughs> I, I haven't seen that movie, but I, it's the super old guy applying for an internship. Pretty much. He nailed it. Yeah. Sure. Why not? <laughs> I'd, I'd give De Niro a job. Sure. 
Yeah. Maybe uh last question here. What's, what's your next goal? Like what's your, uh, you know, next two years, what yeah. ideally uh, would happen? Um, I could, I could, I could sit here and talk to you a while and go all over the place with that. Um, short term for the business, I'd like to really give us um, some sort of differentiator from our competitors. Right now, one of the main uh, one of the main things is just cost, um, and that's that's tough to build a sustainable business off of. So, sort of two different avenues for like the next two to five years is either come up um, with something more automated. Um, so. I, what that is exactly, I don't really know. Um, yeah. Trying to go more digital or more automated um, with our with our service, or um, two, the other thing I think where the industry is going is the self driving trucks. Um, so so potentially getting um, into asset based with the self driving trucks, um, and and one one benefit that we have at this point where um, we have that advantage over our competitors. Um, is that these asset based companies that already have the trucks, um, they're, they're not going to be able to convert those into self driving trucks. Um, whereas we don't actually own any trucks right now. So we're starting from, um, from scratch and we could build up our fleet with some, with some trucks, whereas the other guys, um, are, are going to have to sell those off and, and have, um, have, have those to deal with for now lots of capital tied up for sure yeah yeah exactly you, awesome. you worded that better than, than <laughs> i did a little bit more succinct no and i think the most impressive thing for me uh Sieg's obviously being your friend from from high school is um you know how quickly you've managed to get to this place and um doing it all while being a homeowner as well um which is something you know our generation is gonna struggle um to attain so it's uh it's really impressive and appreciate you coming on the show and maybe next time we'll talk a bit more about the house yeah for sure uh kurt i i definitely appreciate you having me and and uh yeah i I'd, I'd love to come back and maybe we can talk uh real estate next time too yeah i, I want to mix it, it up a I'll bit but you. yeah there you go <laughs> perfect all right well i'm just gonna end the recording here and then we can chat a little bit after but uh, anybody watching out there appreciate it let us know uh, what you want to hear next thanks right. guys